Peace, girlfriends. This is Angela Jordan Perry, and it is that time for another Girlfriends is Guide to Homeschooling interview. All right. So we're going to get ready and set go in just a moment as our guest. She'll be joining us soon. I hope, hope and pray that you all have had a great day today. And uh, Alana is ready. Oh, wow. She is ready to get on here. And we will be getting started in just there she is. Wow, this was the fastest ever. <laughs> Good gracious, you are ready. All right, beautiful. Uh, I'm so excited, girlfriend. So tonight we have a wonderful guest here out of Texas, Alana Higginbotham. I got it right. Yay! <laughs> So very good, Alana. I'm going to share. Just give me a quick moment to do so, and then we're going to get started. How are you? You're doing well since we last talked. How about you? I'm doing good. I, I got my coffee, girlfriend. Woohoo! <laughs> Sister is doing better. I'm doing better. I know all about that. Yeah, yes, yes. All right. So one more um, share, and then we're all set. Girlfriends, as you all come in. Let us know where you're viewing us from. Where do you homeschool? Introduce yourself. And um, let's make a good evening of this time together. So we're all set. I'm about to go in airplane mode here. And uh, we'll give a few more girlfriends a chance to come in. So really excited. Okay. There we go. All right. Here we go. You ready, Alana? I'm ready. All right. Here we go. Three, two, one. Girlfriends, this guide to homeschooling. I am turned up for today's interview with this beautiful queen over here, Alana Higginbotham, out of Texas. And um, I cannot wait to dive in and speak more about her and share about her and hear her journey and um, how I connected with her. This is going to be exciting. So you all hang in there. Let me let you know what this is all about. So this is Girlfriends' Guide to Homeschooling. I'm Angela Jordan Perry. I'm the host of this platform. This platform has many reasons for existence, but mainly it is to give voice to the African homeschooling diaspora, okay, and those who are of the marginalized homeschooling uh, community. That is the purpose, to give voice, to say that we are homeschooled too. We are doing well. Our kids are thriving to share and encourage this village that's being built through Girlfriends has got to homeschooling. So we're scattered, right? The diaspora, we're scattered all over. And then you add in homeschooling, we are even more frequent <laughs> to find each other and connect. So this allows you who are homeschooling, who are part of the African homeschooling diaspora to get encouragement, insights, a little peek into someone else's journey for homeschooling and um, be encouraged or if you're not already homeschooling, to find out best practices and consider diving in and educating our own. That brings us to another platform I tell you about. I share more about that uh, a little later, educating our own. But just a little bit about myself. I'm a homeschooling mom myself of 18 years, eight children have been homeschooling, three of which we've graduated all the way through homeschool, five are left, <laughs> yes. The sister got a ways to go because my youngest is seven, our oldest is 22. And so we just started all over again um, by uh, adoption. We adopted our younger four. So we started all over again. And uh, we make our home in the northwest part of the state of South Carolina, where we are self-sustaining farmers. Uh, I've been married to my husband now for, it'll be 26 years in July. I keep saying 26, so it's 25. But in a couple of months, it'll be 26 years we've been married and together for 29 years. So I serve also the homeschooling community here in South Carolina, where I provide legal rights for homeschoolers to even homeschool, okay? So I have an option three accountability association. They get with me, I help them through the ropes and give them that legal entity to homeschool. So that's a little bit about me, but I am excited and thrilled to have our guest here from Texas. He and I met through another uh, previous interviewee and uh, she and I talked and I was just like beside myself to hear her platform and what is her drive and her commitment. And even now it stirs my heart because I don't know why I'm getting emotional. Maybe I'm real tired, girl. I don't know. I'm getting emotional over here. But um, the reason why it stirred my heart so much because her platform is not 
uh, megaphoned enough in this homeschooled community, in the black community. It is just not megaphoned. And so I cannot wait for her to share more about herself. So with that said, a lot of Higginbotham. Are you ready to make what? it happen? It just rolls off your tongue. I know. I've been practicing. <laughs> Are you ready to make it happen, girlfriend? Ready like Freddie. Let's do it. All right. Yes. All right. Let me tell you a little bit about Alana. And I love she's a bullet point person, right to the point. I could tell a person now that I'm like, yeah, she's like right to the point. Here, here's the bullet points, girlfriend. Alana, 17-year wife, 15-year parent, seven-year homeschool educator, women's ministry leader, mental wellness advocate, which she has got to talk. This is what grabbed my heart. Like, yes. Makeup artist and wardrobe stylist with IMDB. I guess that's how you say that. IMDB. Mm -hmm. Credits in both. Film festival credits in both. Lifetime member of Delta Sigma Theta Incorporated. A public service sorority. But that is the bullet points about Alana, straight to the point. There you go, in your face. But Alana, I have shared just a little bit about you with the girlfriends. If there is more to share, please do. And then let us know how you actually got started on your journey to homeschooling. Okay, um, can you hear me pretty good? Mm -hmm. I began homeschooling seven years ago, and really it came it really came as a necessity at the time um, for a few years, I was looking into private school. Um, but as my dad would say, it was just like six of one, half a dozen of another. It's pretty much similar, even though um, private schools are private. Some of the same things that I was trying to get away from still existed in those institutions. And so I found myself literally between a rock and a hard spot. And I jokingly tell people that, um, God tried had been calling me to homeschool for two and a half years, but I kept sending him to voicemail because it just really wasn't something. Not only was it was it not something, Angela, that I had ever considered, I had never seen anyone who looked like me homeschool their kids. And so it just didn't seem like it was anything that was going to be in any realm of possibility. But Fast forward seven years later, obviously I took the plunge and I really wouldn't have it any other way. Mm -hmm. And so um, how old is your son again now? Uh, I have a year old and I have a uh, one who's about to be 10, two, two oh. boys. Oh, okay. All right. I think I missed that about your second one. Okay. So 15 year um, old and then a 10 year old. Okay. Gotcha. So both homeschooling and so you took the plunge, you went on and got started and dove in and tell us how was this beginning start up for you uh, when you started seven years ago? Well, I, I'm one of those people, you know, you mentioned straight to the point. Um, I'm one of those people who, when I'm going to do it, when I've made the decision to do it, you know, the world around you tries to tell you that um, you should, maybe you should wait until, or it might make more sense if you waited until, and the truth was it really did, you know, on paper make sense. Um, but the truth was, I knew that none of the reasons that I was going to homeschool were going to go away. Okay. And the truth was, how long do I prolong it? Because it seems better on paper to start homeschooling the following school year, as opposed to at the end of October which was what we did. And so essentially, I'm just going to be honest. I didn't know what I was going to do. I didn't know what curriculum I was going to use. I hadn't um, explored the pos I hadn't explored very many co-op groups or anything like that. But what I did know is that it was necessary. And just like everything else in my life, I knew that God was going to provide the provision. So my vision was that I was going to bring my son home. And um, at the time, I, you know, my youngest son was just a baby, um, that I was going to bring my oldest son home and I would homeschool him. And just as I suspected, God revealed every step. We started out in um, uh, classical conversations. And that was a great little cushion for the short time that we were there. It was a great little transition. It made it more comfortable for my um, my very inquisitive and um, not always believed in husband. Um, but he knew that we needed to make some sort of change. So we did 
Classical Conversations was the first thing. And shortly after being a part of that, we realized that we needed something different. And so, you know, sometimes you get just enough light for the step that you're on. Mm -hmm. For another step. Mm -hmm. And essentially, basically what we did. Gotcha. Gotcha. So one of the things you said that because you really didn't see anyone in your community that looked like you, that you knew had homeschooled, um, did you end up finding that community that you, because from what I'm hearing, you're like, well, so we made our decision, boom, it's done. It don't matter. I'm going to do it. Um, was that a big hindrance, not finding the community that looked like you, that homeschool when you first started? I mean, how long of a span were you without that and needed that? Or was it a necessary? Um, I don't think it was. But then again, I think of things a little bit differently than, you know, most people. I'm, I'm kind of radical, Angela. <laughs> So um, it was one of those things where I could have just kept my son in public school and I could have researched and, you know, prepared. And I could have said, you know, I'm going to leave you in third grade till the end of the year while mom prepares and researches and gets things in order and all of that. But the truth was he would still be going through the same changes mm -hmm. that he was going through already. And what the question, the real question was, Am I willing to risk some other something happening mm. that make him even more afraid of, you know, growing and, and, and learning? And so um, I think th what I'm getting at is I did exactly what most people do. I just took my son out of school while I was doing it. So I, I, I'm very confident in my own ability to get knowledge and teach things. And I also was very certain that one of the biggest things in homeschooling was not just curriculum, but it was also teaching my son how to be a person, how to, how to have compassion, how to have confidence in, his, in himself. And I really feel like the time that I took him out of school was a very pivotal time where I feel like that's where kids start to lose faith in themselves at that age. And so I um, went ahead and started the homeschool process by, by pulling him out. And I eventually did find African-American uh, children and moms and just really, I didn't worry myself about it. And I think that's a key thing. Mm -hmm. I didn't take it like it was this horrible, like, oh my God, what, you know, my, my son's not going to be around other people all day. You know, what am I going to do? And at the risk of sounding arrogant, I was like, well, I'm a pretty cool person and he's going to be hanging around me all day. So, you know, he's going to be fine. And I just continued to look, I continued to explore and I was able to find um, a homeschool group filled with brown faces that look just like him. The uh, other part that I focused on is the quality of his relationships and not the quantity. Mm hmm because I really felt like I really feel like my children, no matter what stage they're in, um, they're 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 my students. And and when I say they're my students, I mean not just when we're learning about math and science and so forth, but when we're learning about how to navigate through life. Because and this may be off topic, but let me just say, I really think the most important thing that I can teach my child is how to go about getting knowledge and having the courage to stand in the truth that presents itself when you get that knowledge. So there, there's, there's a dichotomy that exists where we need to teach our children how to be independent thinkers and we need to teach them how to show up in the world with confidence about who they are, but then we also have to teach them to fit into a corporate America system. Mm -hmm. them you know, you might have an opinion, but don't say it because people will frown upon you. You know, you, you might have a great idea, but be careful because the system is set up that African-American males have to work harder. And, and, you know, those things might be true, Angela. I'm not negating that. They might actually be concretely true. But I don't want my child to turn into a man that he allows that to choose his steps. And we've had that conversation. I've told him that. I said, but what we're not going to do is we're not going to allow those circumstances to uh, give us a set of choices. Mm -hmm. So I need you to go to a corporate America setting. I need you to speak your mind and in a very articulate and respectful way. 
And if they do get rid of you because you spoke your mind, I need you to have the confidence to know that job wasn't for you. Mm. Mm -hmm. And that's creating a space for you to navigate your way into a place where you will be accepted, where your ideas will be valued. Because the last thing that I want for my children to do is become adults uh, living the cubicle life. And this is not to say anything bad about people who do, but I know way more people who don't like that life that style than people who do like it. And so all that being said, that was my, my focus. That was, uh, still is my focus. Of course, academics is very important, but that's just, that's just what it was. And because that was my focus, I didn't have to find a community of African-American people right away. I allowed it to present itself to me and it made it golden. And um, I have to say, Trenda Mushambi, mm -hmm. um, who you, you mentioned, uh, talked about her earlier. She's the one who referred me to you. She has been a huge part of my children's um, growth academically. And I, uh, in turn, we work together to also uh, teach our children socially you know, um, moving through life, being confident, things like that. So ultimately, for me, I feel like that's paramount because I'm not perfect. There's going to be some things I'm going to forget to teach them. So I need to teach them to have the confidence to go out there and get their own knowledge and then be confident to relate the knowledge that they that they find. Yeah, yeah. Beautiful. Listen, girlfriends, you all have turned, tuned in to hear Alana Higginbotham on Girlfriends Has Guide to Homeschooling. And if you're just mesmerized like me, I, I just can sit back and not ask any questions. Just let her keep talking. So if you're <laughs> in a mesmerized state, you're just talking to this amazing, uh, powerful, self, you know, confident, determined woman that's happened to be homeschooling, you know? And um, so... If you haven't hit the share button right on the bottom, hit share because sharing is caring. So go ahead and share it out so other people can hear this. But Alana, if nothing else, I wish that we could all just cut a little slice of you up and just share you. This confidence that exudes you is just amazing because you have said very much clear and loudly the contrary of what I hear so many homeschool moms who's considering homeschool they don't have such confidence and that's okay I mean you know it can be developed I'm sure in that confidence but you're like you know we're done we're out of here I'm pulling you out in October I don't know what I'm going to use I don't know what books I'm going to do I don't even know who you're going to hang out with but I'm pretty cool I'm good and I know I can teach you what you need to know we're going to do this thing and so if you could even just pass, if we can just snatch a little bit of that out of you and pass this on to many of us homeschooling and this African homeschooling diaspora who can say, you know what? I don't know what the heck I'm doing. I don't know how I'm going to do it. I just know I'm going to educate my own children. And that's what it's all about. And you know what? I'm going to believe, what do you say? God's going to provide the provision that's needed. Don't give the provision. <laughs> I, I just love it. That's like, that's going to happen. He's, he's never not done that. You know, he's, I, I've never been in a, I've been in a lot of hopeless situations, but I've never been hopeless. I've always known that, okay, I, th this is, this is how I check myself. You know, all things work together for good to those that love the Lord. So when I have a challenge, this is how I check myself. Do I still love the Lord? Okay. It's going to all come out for my good. So as long as I, as long as I keep that little thing. Yeah. No, in through the tears. I mean, <laughs> I, I could tell you about some tough times. Um, losing myself personally in homeschooling, uh, particularly um, at the beginning of this last school year when I closed my makeup and fashion business, when I stepped down as the women's ministry leader. Um, I had another little side business that I closed and I just, because I knew uh, with my oldest son starting the ninth grade, I needed to focus even more because we already know what his professional path is. And so that's, I knew that that was going to be something that we were going to have to delve into. And it wasn't until I let all those responsibilities go that I found myself in literal tears mm. because I heard myself say, wow, now all you are is just a mom. Mm. And I mourned the loss of my independence. I mourned who I was to these other people. 
And I realized um, I'm a deep thinker sometimes to a fault, but I realized that, um, you know, there's a song Drake, uh, Drake sings a song that says there's no awards for that. All the stuff that's really important, all of the things that shape the way that we think that give us what we need to maneuver and navigate through life. There's no awards for that. Mm. There's nobody awards, consistent awards for being a great dad. That shapes how people will live their lives. That shapes how, you, how you're going to be a dad or a mom. Nobody's giving out awards because somebody's compassionate. We got college degrees, which are great, awesome. We've got you know scholarships, which are great. We've got you know being drafted into a professional sports team. Those are all great things. But there's no goat for being an awesome mom. Mm. You know, this of all time. There's no goat for being a great sister. There's no goat for being the person that gets the call at three o'clock in the morning that literally talks somebody off the ledge. But I still know that those things are important. And this whole journey that I've been on has brought me to where I am today. And I can, I can stand and I can say, somebody asked me name two great things about your, yourself. And I said, I'm an awesome mom and I've got great legs. And <laughs> I believe those two things. There was a time where I would have said that where I was just being nice to myself and I didn't really believe that. But I'm a different person today because of the journey that I've allowed myself to go on. That is all right. That is all right. Let me tell you, Alana, that's beautiful. So that's a great segue into our next question, which will maybe allow you to unpack a little bit of what you just shared. But my mantra is that no one gets a ticket to perfect. No one. It doesn't matter who you are your status, your how much money you have or don't have, or your titles, accolades, etc. No one gets the ticket to perfect in this life, and we're all going to have to walk through stuff. So take us to uh, your journey in homeschooling, where it was your most, your most hardest, difficult time, year, month, week, day, whatever it may be, where you almost consider quitting. Like, I'm done with this. I cannot even take this. But at least two or three times a week. What you talking about? I know, I know. Choose one. Choose the first one. <laughs> choose, choose In my mama. <laughs> but, you know, t take us to that day because the reason why I ask this question, girlfriends, to everyone is because that makes them identifiable. That makes them human. You know, we're human and your worst day, your worst moment, we can probably identify, connect with on some level. So share that with us. It almost made you quit, but you didn't quit. And this is why you're this awesome awesome, beautiful leg woman, holy <laughs> mom, <laughs> that you are today. Take us to that. Okay, well, first, there's this quote that keeps me grounded. And I don't know if you know who Vince Lombardi is, but, and I'm paraphrasing, but basically what he said is, we will pursue perfection knowing full well that we will not achieve it, but we will catch excellence in the process. Mm. So the idea is, since I'm not God, I'm, there's no way I can be perfect. But what I will do is I won't give up. That's essentially what that said to me. And um, when it comes to tough days, the thing that, I mean, I'm, I'm just being honest. I have thought many a day about taking these two and enrolling them in school. Many a day. But what happens is, I always go back to what is the reason you started homeschooling? Does that reason, does that reason still exist? Well, then you can't stop homeschooling because in the state of Texas where I live, it, there's a, a, a little bit of a challenge. It's funny because sometimes the greatest thing about something is also the most challenging thing. And in the state of Texas, we really, essentially we have carte blanche to do whatever we want with our kids. I mean, if you're a negligent parent and you want to sit around eating ice cream and watching soap operas all day while your kids run them up, you could probably get away with it because that's just how much freedom they give us. Now, to a good parent like myself who really cares about my children's future, it's also great because I get to do what is best for my kid and not what lines up with any regulations or what have you. The challenge comes in when Sometimes you don't have a guideline and sometimes you find yourself like, what am I doing? And you get so focused on the journey and the method 
that you forget you're actually making headway. Like it dawned on me, okay, Alana, you've been doing this for seven years. Your son's not still in third grade. So, <laughs> you know, and, and, and it's, it's a challenge because hello, <laughs> um, it's a challenge because we think to ourselves, I see people around me. This is one of the biggest trips. This will trip you up and have you in literal tears. I see the people around me and they're doing this and thus and so. I should probably be doing this and thus and so, or at least thus and so. <laughs> but I have to remind myself, okay, that's what they're doing. I know that my son's passion is art and he's very, my, this, I'm talking about my oldest son. Um, he's very good at art and animation, like, re like really good. And I'm not just being a biased mom. So when he goes to art class, the way he is, when he leaves art class, it's like, he, it's your for it's euphoric. It's like he went in and he came out on a high. It's like he, he love absolutely loves it. And he's great at it. So Obviously, that's going to be his career path. Now, he loves animation, so that's likely. Um, uh, I'm in Rochere in Texas. Angela Vaughn just asked where I was in Texas. Um, so likely, he's going to work somewhere like DreamWorks, um, uh, Disney, what have you. We actually have uh, inroads to those two companies where he's going to be spending some time next year, probably a couple of weeks um, interning, so to speak. So everything I do... It has to be that. So it would be, it's really cool for my kid to be a part of, um, say, an entrepreneurial, entrepreneurial, um, uh, entrepreneurial group. It would be really cool for him to be a part of a um, engineering group. It would be really cool if he was a part of, say, this really neat kickball group. But is that his path? And am I doing it because other people are doing it or am I doing it because that's really what he's supposed to be doing? So my challenge comes in with staying focused. My frustration and my wanting to give up comes in usually when I'm not giving myself enough credit for the job that I'm doing. Mm -hmm. um, and because I don't actually have a checks and balances system, I don't have a principal to sit down with to tell me, um, Mrs. Higginbotham, this is what you did right. This is what you need to work on. I don't have that. Hey, Sharon Allen. Um, so the challenge comes in when we allow our sights to veer off, kind of like um, when Paul got out of the boat. So I try my best. It's tough. I try my best to remember this is what the goal is. And as long as it lines up with the goal, that's what we're doing. If it doesn't line up with the goal, we're not doing that. Now, I'm all for extracurricular activities because I believe that those things help as well. But I have to force myself because I'm one of those people that I see. I see 800 different things in a picture all at one time. So I have to work hard to focus and streamline on what's most important. And there are some things out there that are great causes. There are some things out there that are worthwhile but that doesn't mean that I'm supposed to be doing it. Like, I think, I think we should save the whales. I think we should, but I don't know if that's what I'm supposed to be doing. So I just try to stay in my place, stay in my lane, love and nurture, and it works itself out. So long as you do that, it's a good day. If you find yourself not doing that, we're about to pack y'all up and see you somewhere. Cause now, <laughs> right. Okay. All right. So contrastly to that, you know, that picture of what a, your worst time or day in homeschooling would be like take us to your day in homeschooling you're like this is why I do what I do this right here this is why I yanked you out in October and we started this journey because that moment maybe it moved you to tears it just you know stirred your heart affirmed your decision take us to that that moment uh, Alana when I feel like I'm clicking on all cylinders when I feel like okay, this is what the journey is all about, are in moments where my oldest son, whose name is Drew, um, 
when my oldest son is working on an art project and the rest of his schoolwork and doing well at all of it. When my oldest son, the artist, is able to learn about teamwork through, because he's not a sports guy, he's able to learn about teamwork and getting things done because of the team of people that he works with at his, at his art studio. Um, I, there was a situation where I set a goal for him. He doesn't know that I did this, but I told him that in order for him to be able to sign up for art the next semester that he had to finish, he had to be halfway through his biology book. And that meant that he was going to have to complete like seven chapters over the course of two and a half weeks. And that was to, you know, light the fire under him. And when he went to art class and his teacher and the art school owner said, well, Drew, um, are you going to be signing up for next semester? He explained to them, well, my mom said that I have to finish my biology first. And they got on him good. They said, listen, do you one the lady that owns the studio was actually a, a former professor. She said, I can tutor you in biology if you need <laughs> so to watch him evolve. And he's in the path that he loves, doing what he is required of him, because biology isn't what he loves, but it's required of him. And working in a team setting, all of those things coming together, it makes you know, okay, I'm doing what I'm supposed to do. Mm -hmm. Year old spends countless hours watching Brain Pop. And just like it's a television show. And he is able to articulate things once he gets uh, into his books and doing schoolwork that he's learned from Brain Pop. And it's like, okay, this is working. I'm teaching them independence. They're learning on their own and they're fulfilled. And that's what's important to me. Mm, beautifully. Okay, tell us what's, what's, what is Brain Pop? I've not heard of that. Oh, Brain Pop is a website and it. It, it's it's a cart it's a website that's filled with tons of videos that teach children all different types of subjects and I'm talking all the way through high school and there's tons of little videos and the two main characters in these cartoons is a robot named Moby and a human named Tim and Tim and Moby basically they get fan mail and they answer certain questions and Tim and Moby talk about everything from the quadratic equation to the founding of hip hop and who Grandmaster Flash is. <laughs> okay. Perfect because my nine year old, almost 10 year old is actually um, DJing and music is his path. So okay. I just turn him loose. Uh, they don't get to have screen time during the week. Hey, Katrina, C Katina Caesar, one of my classmates. Um, they don't get screen time during the week. So it's kind of, you know, he thinks he's getting over by getting screen time, but he's learning a ton of stuff that I don't know. I now don't have to teach him. Gotcha. 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 Beautiful. Thanks for sharing with that. All right, girlfriends. Woo! You are here with Girlfriend's Guide to Homeschooling and Alana Higginbotham out of Texas. And I'm Angela Jordan Perry, the host of this show. So listen. This lady, she has a wealth of knowledge, wealth of information, so much I want to pull from her, but time just won't let me and it's just slipping by. I'm like, ah, oh, so good. And so I'm, I just, I'm telling you right now, you're going to want to hit the rewind button and go back and listen to these nuggets and insights and truth and draw and glean from this confidence that's exuding from this beautiful woman. I mean, you just, it's just been really heartwarming for me to hear I think I want to do like four podcasts on four different conversation topics. She just have laid forth just right now. It's just like been really good. So I hope this is you great, you know, gaining insightful in, uh, information, encouragement, nuggets and wisdom that it's going to serve you well in your homeschooling journey. So we're going to go to our second part of the show um, where this time, uh, Alana, I asked you specific questions to pick your brain. These can be quick answers, uh, one or two sentences just to give her you know, right on the cuff there. So you all be sure to hit the share button is on the bottom, hit share, uh, your bottom left hand, depending on what you're using, uh, cause sharing is caring and let others know about this platform and hear this woman share, okay? So uh, Alana, what is your favorite mantra? Maybe what you told me earlier is it, but what is your favorite quote or mantra that keeps you going along this homeschooling journey? Really, it's what I said, uh, the scripture that all things work together for good to those that love the Lord. It's it's one of those things that um, 
I, I think pretty much everybody knows, but we forget that no matter what's going on, it's all for our good. And so if I can get rid of the head trash in whatever moment I'm having and focus on, oh, wait, oh, this is just part of the course I'm taking. This is just another class in the degree I'm trying to get, and it's for my good. So if I do that, I'm able to get back on track and learn what it is I'm having to learn from that situation so that I don't have to repeat whatever it is. Do you plan to homeschool your children all the way through to the end, to their next journey of education? I plan to, but I'm open to whatever happens in the future. Gotcha. Um, what curriculum or CD or a book that has helped you along this journey that you think that every homeschool uh, should have this, every African melanated family should have this book or resource in their library? Life of Fred. I don't care who you are, how much you <laughs> love math, how much you love language arts. Life of Fred is Bible in our house. All right. Life of Fred. If you're not familiar with that, Google it. We have the whole set. And, and yeah. yeah, it's excellent. 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 Uh, what is the best piece of advice that you have received as you've been on this homeschooling journey? Okay, it happens to be the best piece of advice I've ever received in life. And the best piece of advice I've ever received in life that I've used on my homeschool journey is never take advice from someone you wouldn't trade places with. Love it. <laughs> That's it. <laughs> any genre, somebody who has filed bankruptcy, but they're giving you financial advice. Someone who has been divorced three times and they're giving you marital advice. Hope all that, all that. Gotcha. Yes, absolutely. Uh, what is your favorite resource or tool or online app or video or something? Maybe it's the brain bop pop if you have some others that you want to recommend to the girlfriends watching. Um, I would have to say that's a great question, first of all, because there's a lot of them out there. Definitely spellingcity.com. Definitely brain pop. And flow vocabulary. Okay. And we'll have you at the end. If you can go back and you can type those in. I'm, I'm familiar with flow vocabulary, but um, I can put those in. Spelling city, flow vocabulary. Yes, yes, yes. Doc, is it flowcabulary.com? Uh, it is. Okay. Got it. Yeah. I'll put those in there, girlfriend, so you can have that information or someone can type it in. Uh, that'd be fine. Uh, let's see. Here we go. This is an extra question before the last question, but I just got to ask you this. And so this is a little bit of a rabbit trail because this is the one thing that you said in our whole conversation that made me think, yeah, I, we need to get her on the show. And you mentioned just having the space for uh, mental health care and just um, this is what's missing in the homeschooling uh, community as a whole. Share with us, just, just share something along those lines of what you shared with me on the phone uh, before we get to our last question. Okay, real quick. When it comes to mental wellness, a lot of us miss it, particularly in our African-American community. A lot of us think that if we're having a challenge of any sort that we just pray about it or we consult with our pastor about it and all of those things are great. But I liken those two things to a good weight loss plan. You want to eat right, take some vitamins and supplements, and work out. So I'm not saying that your pastor doesn't know what he's talking about. I'm not saying pre praying is inefficient. I'm saying it's just a piece of the puzzle that is missing. A lot of us in the African-American community think that um, if you're having mental challenges, mental challenges is equated to uh, your Aunt Leah, who wears her underwear on the outside of her pants. Now, that's crazy, but that's not the only, that's the picture of mental health that we look at. But the truth is, mental health challenges are when you wake up in the morning and you woke up an hour late and you're two loads behind in the laundry and you need to dust and you just think you're the worst mom ever. Mm -hmm. And you're just telling yourself, why can't you get it together? Why do you eat that way? Why don't you work out? Why, why did you snap at your husband? What's wrong with you? Those are mental health issues. Because when you compile all of that, I call it head trash, 
when you compile that head trash one on top of the other, it begins to bring you down and you're rendered inefficient to do any of those jobs. Mm, 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 mm. So what do you say to a girlfriend? What do you do? I mean, tell us, I mean, homeschool, because in the homeschool, we're, if nothing else, we're in the home and we stay in our head a lot. Okay. So here's, what do we do? Your, first of all, log off of Facebook. <laughs> Put down social media. I'm so guilty of this. This I am not perfect. I'm I'm basically, I'm just living this life and I'm telling you what I learned along the way. So logging off of social media, getting adequate rest, interacting with people outside of your home. If for whatever reason you can't get out of the house, pick up the phone and call your friend. Now I know you're thinking, Alana, you probably talk to people all day long because talking is not a problem for you. I am bad. I'm so bad at it. I will go a whole week and never talk to another soul that lives outside of my house. Mm. And those are the things that just increase the head trash. It increases. My husband came home one day and lit, um, literally picked me up off of the sofa and put me outside on the front porch and closed the door. He said, sit out here and breathe some fresh air in and out for a while. And that's what you have to do. You have to get out of your head by talking to other people, leave the house, and um, stay off of social media for too much. I mean, social media is necessary for some people, but excess amounts of it can really be detrimental. Mm -hmm, mm -hmm. Very good. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. That was a short snippet, but so good. And I just want, we need to hear that talk because- as African-American in our community, a lot of time that is shunned. It's nothing we go to, nothing we consider. We don't do that, you know. And so thank you for just being so transparent. I appreciate that. We need to consider that for ourselves, you know. So thank you. Thank you. Thank you. Therapist. Say that again. I don't know what I would do without my therapist. She, she helps me navigate through life in general, and she's like a life coach. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Beautiful. Thank you. Thank you, Alana. So here we are. We're on the last question. The million dollar question. Are you ready? <laughs> so ready. Okay. So Alana Higginbotham, <laughs> if you had to start all over again, back to day one of your homeschooling journey, but you have your current wisdom, you have your current knowledge, skills, convictions, insights, you know, all of that. You have all of what you have now, but you get to start all over again. What would be the first thing you'd be sure to implement in your homeschooling or be sure to not do in your homeschooling this time around? That is a great question. <laughs> and I'm usually not a person with any regrets. So it's a tough question for mm -hmm. me. But one thing that does stick out, one thing that's paramount is realizing that you are navigating this boat. I think that particularly for, for moms that come from a public school background, we forget that the goal is not to finish the workbook. We forget that the goal is not to spend every waking moment. And, you know, sometimes maybe we don't need to do chapter 13 through 17 in the biology book because there's a really cool YouTube video that taught you everything you need to know about that. Maybe we don't need to continue this biology curriculum because it became highly recommended. We need to get rid of it and start fresh. Mm -hmm. It doesn't matter that you already bought this curriculum. Two weeks into the school year, he's having trouble with it. You're the principal, you're the guidance counselor, ditch it. Sell it on eBay and go get the <laughs> curriculum for him. Yeah, 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 yeah. Very good. Very good. Very, very, very good. All right. So you, you, what you basically said, I'm not a person without regrets, but the biggest thing you would do is just realize you don't have to get everything completed or finished. Right. I'm not a person with many regrets. I'm sorry. Yes. No, yes, yes, yes. Regrets. But what I would, I would just take more ownership. I, I forgot. I'm the mom. I don't have to finish this workbook. I can ditch it and try something else. We can go through five different curriculums through the course of a year as long as at the end of it, he gets the knowledge that he needs to move forward in his journey. Beautiful. All right, girlfriends, but you have heard it. You have heard it all from Alana Higginbotham out of Texas, homeschooling mom of two, a 15 year old and a soon to be 10 year old boy. And again, 
Just so so much information, good insights and nuggets and wisdom, you all. You all be able to be sure to share this. You just never know who's homeschooling and need to hear this information or who's considering homeschooling and still need to hear this information. So be sure to hit the share button. Um, so Alana, are there any last words of advice you want to share with the girlfriends? And then what is the best way they can get in contact with you if they want to continue this conversation with you? Uh, the best way they can get in contact with me is um, through Instagram. I'm, I'm pretty much Alana Higginbotham on all platforms. That's A-L-A-N-A, -A, last name H-I-G-G-I-N-B-O-T-H-A-M. And the thing that I would leave you with is sometimes the best thing for your homeschool day, and, and also I want to go on record as saying that a lot of what you and I talked about really transcends for moms in general, not just homeschooling, but uh, and this bit of advice as well, is that sometimes the very best thing that you can do as a mom, as a homeschool teacher, as a wife, is to go get a pedicure and not do school that day. Sometimes the best thing you can do for your husband is to cancel school and sit on the sofa and watch Love and Hip Hop all day. Now, maybe we don't want to do excess amounts of that, but we don't give ourselves enough of a brain break. Mm -hmm. There's of unlimited things. There will always be laundry to be done. There will always be laundry to be done. There will always be food that needs to be cooked. But sometimes sandwiches and chips for dinner, it's possible. <laughs> I, make a, I make a darn good ham sandwich, by the way. <laughs> Toast bread and everything. So sometimes I feel like what we do is we put ourselves last and that's the absolute wrong thing to do. We need to be first. We need to fill ourselves up so that we have something in our vessel to pour into someone else. All right. Yeah, yeah, yes. Girlfriends, you are the average of the five people you hang around with. And this past hour, you've been hanging with Alana Higginbotham. You all listen. <laughs> Keep up the momentum and continue to connect with positive people like this woman right here. So sister circle, I, I learned that language from a girlfriend this past week, sister circle, get your sister circle in which you can connect to. That's going to bring in that positive influence in which you can draw from. And then you be that positive influence that others can, can draw from as well. So it's this give and take community, you know? And so you have been drawing, we've been pulling out of Alana. We can't chop up and give all of you a piece of this, you know, confidence she have, but you sure can listen to this over and over and over and meditate on these words she shared. It's been great. Very good. So keep up the momentum and Alana girlfriends is guide to homeschool. And we are so thankful to you. I'm thankful to you and appreciate uh, this time and so grateful for Trenda connecting us and, and just giving us this opportunity to, to, to even just meet, you know, virtually and by phone. We're so grateful to you for your insights, your wisdom, and your, your nuggets of uh, truth that you shared with us. I appreciate you and, and applaud you for all you're doing. Keep making that positive impact, impact girlfriend. I, I'm just really excited to be connected to you. So thank you so much. Appreciate it. It was my pleasure. Yes, yes, yes. Thank you. So, girlfriends, let me tell you. Follow us. Go over to Girlfriends' is Guide to Homeschooling. Hit the like button. So every time we get these amazing interviewees on this show, I'm going to tell you, every time, I, 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 I don't know, I should be like this guru of homeschooling because I get to, you know, sample a little bit of everybody's stuff. I mean, such good information. So every time there's a new interviewee that comes on, you would get notification. You can jump on and listen to this, their interview or go back and listen to it. So go over and like the page. Follow us on YouTube if you're a YouTuber. Follow us on Instagram if you prefer that. Go to Tumblr. Find us there. Uh, find us. Um, we're on all social media platforms on Twitter. Get connected. Okay. So this is all for you to be encouraged, to be in sight, you know, receive some insights. Some I can do this, some confidence to move forward. But remember this. Remember that to teach a child is to touch a life. And as we homeschool, we not only touch a life, we shape the future through our efforts of homeschooling. 
So keep making that positive impact day after day, year after year. Sit your little self down and get a pedicure if you need to. Go and eat some chips and dip and watch some, some videos if you need to. Do what Alana said. Take care of you first so that you can be able to pour out and stay mentally free, if you will, of this, uh, what does she call this, mind trash? <laughs> you know, do what you need to do to care for yourself. Take Alana's advice. It's been great. So, Alana, again, thank you. I'm going to tell you, as I mentioned before, Educate Not Own. You all stay on the lookout for that. Educate Not Own is a platform for us, by us, where it's going to bring even more support, insights, wisdom, get you ready to go on your homeschooling journey, get some village elders in place. So excited. Stay posted for Educate Not Own. It's a platform that's coming again very soon. Look out for that. So other than that, this again is Angela Jordan Perry. Three times a week, we come out with an interview uh, just as amazing as Alana's. Stay connected. You're going to want to be. All right. Until next time, peace to all of you. Have a great evening. Bye, Alana. Thank you.